Hello, fourth grade. It's Miss Simpson, and it is time for math today. We are going to be talking about data representations. We're going to talk again, and we're going to review. We've gone over these once or twice before. Um, we had a whole week on data representation, and now it's time for your review before the STAR test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the three different types of data representations, what they are, how we use them, and then we're going to do two practice problems together, and then I'm going to set you free to do your fast focus. So please pay attention and work things out with me because that is how we learn here in math especially when you're watching videos fourth grade because videos you guys tune me out don't tune me out pay attention stay focused stay awake let's do this so there are three different types of data representations that we talk about in the fourth grade that's the frequency table dot plots and stem and leaf plots so let's start by focusing on our frequency table a frequency table tells us how often data occurs your table can have digits in it like this one it says how many my or how many miles driven on monday 30 tuesday 32 wednesday 28. it can have a table with tally marks and this is the one that i see all the time um, it'll have your label like pizza, food, whatever, how many tally marks, and then it'll say frequency. The frequency is just how many tally marks there are. So I count it up all the tally marks and put it on frequency. And then you might have a table with a range. So say six students read between zero and three books, 15 students read between four and five books, three students read between six and seven books, and so on and so forth. The second table that we have is a dot plot that we will see. It looks very similar to a number line. A dot plot, almost always, you need to pay attention and look for the key. So for this one, one dot is one student. So it says number of books read. So I am assuming that on this one, let me get my pen out. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six students read one book. Two students read two books. One student read three books. On this one, on a dot plot, we have maybe circles. So for every circle, there would be four students. So let's say one. That would be four plus four. The eight students have one pet at home. Four, eight, 12 students have two pets at home. Four students have three at home. So you've got to pay attention to the key because like this represented one student, but this represents four. For this one, it has coffee cups. That can happen too. And look down here, it has a range at the bottom. This says two teachers for every coffee cup. So with this one, zero to five teachers or zero, nope, two Four teachers, because there's two coffee cups, drink zero to five ounces of coffee per day. This one has X's. Guess what? X's work too. And this one is up and down. It's still a dot plot. You just have to pay attention to this key. For every X equals four students. So if I was counting by fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 20 students have zero tardies. So a dot plot uses dots or symbols to represent a data set. We can do this all the time. If I took a survey and said, um, what is everybody's favorite color? I could put blue, orange, purple, yellow, and I could put dots on there to show how many students like blue, how many students like purple. We use this all the time to represent data. I'm sure that you probably remember this from our data project that we did where we surveyed either our class or we surveyed people from our house and we did like their age, their shoe size, favorite colors, favorite foods. We did all of that. And then we put all of our things into data representations. Another thing that we see, and this is probably by far the hardest in fourth grade, is stem and leaf plots. This is where we group our numbers by place value. So this side in the stem is our tens place. This side is our ones place. So for example, on this, we have a bunch of numbers that you might not recognize. So this would be, there's a zero here in the tens place. So I would have one, two, three dolphin sightings. On this one, I would have one, 
10. There's nothing in the ones place, so it would be a zero. So that's 10. On this one, I would have 24 because that's the tens place. That's the ones place. 20 to 5, 29. And on this last one, I would have a 30 and a 1 and a 30 and a 4. So that is how stem and lead plots work. This, again, is your tens place. And this is your ones place. So this would be 61. This would be 72 and 73. This would be 81, 82, 83, 84. So when you guys did this for your data project, you, um, you did age, age in your family. You surveyed, I think it was 10 people in your family and you told me their ages. That was a really good one that we put into Stanley Plot. So we are actually going to answer two questions. So your assignment today is only two questions. We're gonna do two questions and then I'm gonna let you get started on those for your assignment. So let's go ahead and let's start out with number one. Bruce sold roasted nuts at a market last weekend. He sold seven pounds of peanuts. He sold three times as many pounds of almonds as peanuts. He sold 28 pounds of cashews and 66 pounds of nuts in all. Which frequency chart represents this information? So this says number of pounds. So what I'm gonna do first when I see a frequency table, I'm going to go ahead, especially if they've got tally marks, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to label all of them with the number. So this is seven, this is 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28, 5, 10, 15, 20, 21. And I'm going to do that for all 5, 10, the tables. So that's 25, 28, and 10, 7, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28, 28, 3, Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the basic information from the top and see which doesn't match. So it says seven pounds of peanuts. I'm going to go through and I'm going to see if any of them don't have seven pounds of peanuts. So this one has seven, 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 and seven. So I've already checked peanuts. I'm going to cross it off my list. Now I'm going to say three times as many pounds of almonds as peanuts. So three times as many almonds as peanuts. So right now I want you to tell me what is seven times three? 21. So almonds has to be 21. If almonds isn't 21, I can mark it off. This almonds is 10. This almonds is 21. This almonds is 28. And this almonds is 21. So I've checked off almonds. I've done that. Now I'm going to move on to cashews. So 28 pounds of cashews for our last two. I'm going to check cashews 28, cashews 23. That one's not gonna work. So before we end, 66 pounds of nuts in all. So if I add all four of those numbers up, it should give me 66. So let's go ahead and do that. On your piece of scratch paper right now, I want you to add all of these numbers up. So pause the video if you need to, add all of them up, and then we'll see what you get. All right, so eight plus seven plus one was 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, 66. And it says 66 pounds in all. So the answer is B. I always go through problems step by step by step by step. All right, so let's check out this stem and leaf plot. Omar listed the number of hours he worked after school on eight days last month. Which plot represents the data in the list? So remember, in this case, this normally is the tens place and the ones place. This looks like they did whole number. And this looks like they did the fraction, whatever is left over. So everybody has one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start checking off every single number. So I know I need one and one fourth. Okay, I've got that. Do I have another one and one fourth? No, I don't. So it can't be F. Okay, does this one have one and one fourth? Yes, it does. Does it have one and one half? 
Yes, it does. Does it have one and three fourths? Yes, it does. Okay, moving on. Does it have two and one fourth? Yes, it does. Two and a half. Yes, it does. Two and three fourths. Yes, it does. This one's looking good. Three and one fourth. And four and three fourths. No, it doesn't. Oh, no, guys, this can't be it. I want you right now, and I want you to check this one. I'm going to get it a little closer. It's hard to get it close because of how big the plot is. I want you to check this one right here. What I noticed about this one is it has two one-halves. This one has a fourth and a half, but this one has two one-halves, so it can't be that one. So it's got to be this one. So I'm going to check it and make sure. One and one-fourth, one and one-half, one and three-fourths, two and one-fourth, two and one-half. And look, three and three-fourths. Oh, sorry. Three and three-fourths and three and one-fourths, so it's got to be J. All right, so today for your assignment, when you go through, just check and make sure that that stem and leaf plot, whatever it is, you go through and you check and make sure you label it and you read the problem very carefully. Remember, your stem is typically your, your tens place and your leaf is your ones place. In this case, it told you the key right here that your stem was your whole number and your leaf was your fraction. You have two questions today and it's all over data representation and we're going to do the same thing tomorrow. So you guys, y'all do that fast focus right down below. It's just two questions and you have fun. I love you guys so much and I hope you have a great day.